Yeah, one of the one of the problems when Cook was opening the batting was that he was not able to uh, get the scoreboard moving. Mm-hmm. Consequently, there was pressure on the batsman at the other end, which towards the end of Cook's career was moving early. So uh, people had to not only score for themselves, but they also had to sort of score for uh, Cook's lack of uh, both runs and the fact that he was eating up balls without contributing anything. So now that Ian Bell is uh, back at the top of the order. He's got a very good record as an opening batsman. So, and he, and he really enjoys opening the batting. That's obviously made a few other things to the way that they're approaching the batting. So yeah, the signs are there. Uh, they have a very strong uh, middle order as well with uh, Taylor, Root, Bopara, Butler, and of course Morgan himself. So uh, if they can get off to a good start, then you'll see that scores of 300 plus uh, will be fairly regular. Australia began uh, poorly with the ball, uh, both uh, start start on no swing, so once he, uh, once there's not much swing and on a flat track where the ball is coming closely onto the back, and he sort of is uh, cannon for the both he and Cummins didn't really bowl good length, they were too short, and they were put away by well, very most comprehensively. But as the ball started to get a little older and as, as it started to reverse a little bit, and that's when uh, they sort of came into their own. I thought Popno was brilliant in the middle. And then Stark came back very well. Sandu bowled a good spell. And Andre came on his return. Andre was very good as well. So they, once, the ball, once the ball started to do a little bit, then they pulled things back beautifully. I think there's been over that uh, towards the end of the innings. England were looking at about 330 to 40. Mm-hmm. They only conceded 59 in the last 10 when they had eight wickets going into the final fifth of the innings. I think that was, that was an excellent effort. England, by contrast, uh, they never found any rhythm. Uh, Anderson was a little bit off color. Uh, Wokes went for a few at the start of their innings. And then once uh, Australia got off to a start, the problem was even though Australia kept losing wickets, they were scoring at a good enough rate. So England really didn't have uh, any way back, uh, especially when the balls dropped reversing after a while for them. For Australia, it sort of reversed consistently till the end of the 50th hour. But as for England, at some stage it stopped reversing, and then after that they were really close. Yeah. Australia have always been uh, one of the main teams to beat at the World Cup. They have four champions for four times now. And they know they know how to win. They've been there in the big stage. They're always a threat. But the fact that uh, they're playing at home, uh, though we must remember that when they played in uh, Australia and New Zealand in 1992, Australia did not progress on the first stage. So uh, home advantage can work both ways. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, all the signs are um, extremely promising. The batting is in very good hands. So they are still a little over reliant on Smith and Warner. They'll be happy for some of the other batsmen to get some runs in the next match against India and play in the final. But uh, they have a very mean look about it. India have found themselves in this position many times in the past where they have had to do something uh, really spectacular to get through to the finals. Now they have. Uh, they have actually no option but to win both their matches. I mean, on paper, it looks like in, uh, India England matches a knockout game and they can afford to lose to Australia. But mm-hmm. because of the fact that they lost by uh, so many balls to spare against England, their net run rate is really low. So uh, ideally, India have to win both matches to make sure that uh, the calculators do not come into the fray. So in a way, in one way, it is good because you know exactly what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, how they respond to the pressures, we'll have to see what, what we don't know as of now what the uh, status of Rohit Sharma is because today they had an optional net practice and Rohit Kohli and Ashwin were uh, three people who did not turn up for practice. Hmm. So, Rohit obviously becomes very crucial because he showed a little bit of form in the first game. Uh, India has traditionally been dependent on their batting and it's not different this time around as well. So if, if they entertain any hopes of making it through to the final, then they need 